हेलो फ्रेंड्स माई सेल्फ दीपक पवार आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू विकी नोट चैनल टूडे विल सी द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ यूनिट नंबर वन दैट इज मैक्रोज सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी द पार्ट दैट इज अ डिजाइन ऑफ अ टू पास मैक्रो प्रोसेसर अप टू दिस पॉइंट दिस क्वेश्चन वॉज ऑन दिस पार्ट देर वॉज नो क्वेश्चन आस्क इन द एग्जाम बट स्टिल इफ दे आर आस्किंग अ क्वेश्चन वी मस्ट बी एबल टू राइट द एंसर ऑफ दिस क्वेश्चन सो विल सी हाउ टू राइट द एंसर so the question may frame in this way explain the design of two pass macro processor in detail so they may ask this question for 6 marks so we'll see how to write the answer of this we all know the the function of a macro processor so macro processor basically it takes a source program which is having the macro definitions and macro calls and finally it translate that program into the assembly language program where we don't have any macro definition or a call so in this diagram it is explained so for macro processor we are passing the input where we have the macro definitions and the output of that macro processor is the expanded program where we don't have any macro definitions and later this is passed to your assembler program which will finally generate the object program so already we know that the macro processor or the macro program is the pre process program so we'll see how we are going to process the macro so there are as there are two passes for macro processor initially we will see the algorithm for pass one how we are going to expand the macro so the first step inside that is we have to initialize the mntc which is called as a macro name table counter so this is containing the name of all the macro macros available inside our program so that is we are going to initialize with the value 0 and second we are going to again initialize one more counter which is called as a macro name definition counter so this definition counter it is again we are going to initialize with the value 0 so this is the first step after that we are scanning our entire program for the macro definitions one by one so we are going to check is there any macro definition in our program or not if we found the macro in our program then for each macro we have to perform the following step so the first step is nothing but we have to increment our macro name counter by one as we found the first macro and we have to enter the name of that macro in our mnt that is called as a macro name table after entering that name inside the macro name table we are moving towards the next step where we are incrementing the macro definition table by one and for each model statement or for each instruction we are going to increment that mntc by one in your definition of a macro and finally we are going to generate the argument list table this argument list array it contains the formal parameter as well as the actual parameters available for one macro call so this is the pass one available for the macro processor now next we are going to see the pass two for the macro processor so in pass two basically we are going to scan the main program for the macro call is there any macro call in our program or not that we are going to check if we found the macro call then for each macro call we are going to perform the following operation we are initially going to scan the mnt to detect which macro is get called for the macro name the mnt it contains a macro name as well as its mdt address so we are going to initially search the macro name and after that we are going to take the address for the mdt after this we are going to replace all the formal parameters available inside your mdt by your actual parameters and finally my macro call it is get replaced by the model statement which is having the all actual parameter so in this way my macro processor it is going to perform the operation now we will see with the help of example how mdt mnt mntc mdtc it will work as well as how we are going to generate the array parameter list so see this is the example of that as well as in exam they may ask you the question on this so they may ask you the question 
राइट कंटेंट्स ऑफ एम एन टी मैक्रो नेम टेबल कॉमा एम डी टी मैक्रो डेफिनेशन टेबल एंड एर्ग्यूमेंट लिस्ट एर ए फॉर द फॉलोइंग प्रोग्राम सो दे मे आज दिस क्वेश्चन फॉर सिक्स मार्क्स वेर टू मार्क्स आर फॉर एम एन टी टू मार्क्स आर फॉर एम डी टी एंड अगेन द रिमेनिंग मार्क्स आर फॉर युअर एर्ग्यूमेंट लिस्ट एर ए सो दिस इज द प्रोग्राम विच इज अवेलेबल इनिशियली आई विल गो फॉर द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ प्रोग्राम देन विल सी हाउ एम एन टी इज गेट जनरेटेड एंड हाउ एम डी टी इज गेट जनरेटेड सो वी ऑलरेडी नो द डेफिनेशन ऑफ मैक्रो इज अवेलेबल एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ प्रोग्राम और एट द एंड ऑफ प्रोग्राम सो हियर द डेफिनेशन इज अवेलेबल एट द स्टार्ट सो हियर द मैक्रो की वर्ड आफ्टर दैट वी आर गोइंग टू राइट द प्रोटोटाइप स्टेटमेंट और द नेम ऑफ द मैक्रो and here we are passing some formal parameters so here i pass total three formal parameters having the name x y z so initially the work of this macro is take the value from memory location x increment that value with the y and again store to perform this operation they are again going to use the register z so you can see here move r and percent z is the register so we are taking the memory location inside the register first then we are adding the value of z with the y to perform the increment operation after performing addition result is available in z and then that z value we are again moving inside the variable x so this is in this way these all are the formal parameters we have written the model statement with respect to formal parameter and my macro is going to end so this macro it will perform the increment operation in the same fashion in the program they are giving another macro where they are giving the name as decr which is used for decrement so again they are passing three parameter and percent a and percent b and percent c equal to b rec so here they assign the value b rec to the and percent c it implies that this is the default parameter expansion which we have so wherever we will get and percent c directly the value is replaced by b rec and this a is nothing but the memory location and and percent b is the value to be incremented so here again it is written move r and c and a so we are taking the contents of a inside the c register which is inside the c variable which is nothing but the b register and then we are going to subtract it for the decrement operation and lastly we are again going to store that content inside the memory location a so this is The my mac second macro is going to end. So here I define total two macro. One is having name INCR. One is having name DECR. Now we will see the main program. So inside the main program, the first line I have written start hundred. So this start is a directive, and we are going to start our LC location counter at the location hundred. I am going to read two values: read N one and read N two. N one is with respect to the memory location from which we are going to read the content and n2 is nothing but again a memory location which we are using for the incrementing or decrementing value now here you can see that i am calling the macro incr so this is the name of the macro incr so in the formal parameter list already we see we have seen that and percent x and percent y and percent z these three formal parameters we are passing so while calling the macro i should go for the actual parameter again this actual parameter must be in the same fashion so here you can see that the actual parameter n1 n2 and a reg these are the three actual parameter i am using this calling is called as a positional calling so that's why n1 it will take place of x n2 it will take place of y and a reg it will take place of z in this way this expansion will take place with the actual value and this x y z are the formal values again second you can see that i am again calling after that i am calling this next macro which is having a name as decr i we have already seen the definition of decr inside that one parameter is your by default parameter so only two parameters are remaining so this n1 it will take place of a and this n2 it will take place of b so this is again in this way it will perform the operation the last instruction is stop i read the n1 and n2 so that's why i am declaring two storages n1 d as declare storage i am declaring one byte storage for that for n2 again i am declaring one byte storage and my program is going to end so this is the input to my macro processor which is having total two macro definitions and two macro calls so the final output the pass to output of macro processor is the program without macro so we will see that so initially we will go for the mnt that is a macro name table so how it will or what are the contents of mnt that we will see so mnt it contains the name of the macro 
which appear in our program so here we have two names one is incr one is a decr right these are the two names and you can see that initially the mntc it was zero the moment it will file incr it will get incremented by one the moment it will file decr it is get incremented by one and if there is a third macro the mntc value it will point to the three in this way this mntc counter is used now here we can see one more parameter that is the mdt index inside the mnt so from where this mdt index come so we already know in pass one we are getting the second table which is called as a mdt mdt stands for macro definition table the moment we will get incr here the value of incr is get copied inside your macro name table and at the same time the functions the prototype statements available inside your incr they are get copied inside your mdt so here you can see the first parameter as the name of your macro second is the instruction third instruction fourth instruction till amend all values are get copied here and here we have one more counter which we are calling it as mdtc macro definition counter so this counter initially it was zero the moment we are instructing first instruction it is get incremented by one second instruction third instruction fourth fifth in this way mdtc is get incremented by one for every model statement so initially we find the definition of incr and my incr is available at the location one the starting of my int incr is available at a index one inside my mdt that's why it is written as mdt index one my incr is going to end at the location number five so if i am going for the next macro after incr we have the second macro which is having a name as decr so my decr is going to start at the memory location 6 inside my mdt that's why here mdt index is written as 6 so inside my mdt again i am going to copy all the model statements available for decr so after copying this model statement my mdt is is having a value 11 where i can go for the definition of third macro in this way mnt and mdt is form for every program so this is the output of pass one where we are generating mnt as well as mdt one more parameter is remaining that is argument list array this argument list array is very simple it is related with the macro call whatever we have so in my main program i call this two macro first one is incr n1 comma n2 comma a rec so first this argument list array it contains two list two parameters one is a formal parameter and what is the actual parameter which we are using for the formal parameter so we know that x is replaced by n1 y is replaced by n2 and z is replaced by a rec as it is a positional parameter expansion this is happening for that now we are moving towards the second macro call so that is a decr n1 comma n2 so my a value is get replaced by n1 my b value is get replaced by n2 which are actual parameter but here i have one default value that is a c which is having a c rec so inside my main program also i have the c rec which is nothing but the default value so in this way we can write the argument list array for macro call so this is the output of macro pass 1 now we'll go for the macro pass 2 exactly what happened so macro pass 2 is simply nothing but the macro expansion so where i don't have any instructions related with the macro so you can see that macro expansion so first line is a start 100 which was there inside your input program next read n1 read n2 these two lines were there and where where we call the incr now instead of incr they replace the incr with this three expanded model statements mu r a rec comma n1 so here from the actual parameter we can initially find that how which value we are going to take place so that is nothing but a rec comma n1 next we are going to add that add a rec comma n2 so we want to increment by the value n2 and the same value we are going to keep it inside the location n1 by mu m instruction so these are the model statements for incr call and this model statements for decr call where c reg is a by default register or the it was a default value and n1 n2 these are your actual values so in this way the macro 2 incr is this is the expansion of incr and this is the expansion of dec and lastly it is a stop then the storage we have for n1 n2 and the end so if you see the expansion i only have total 6 instructions for my incr call and for my dcr call so this is the final output of your macro 
where we are getting the program without macro that is nothing but the expansion of macro thanks for watching this video stay tuned for more such videos please like and share this video with your friends also refer my website wikinote.org follow us on our facebook page wikinote foundation the links for the same are provided in the description box below